Hey everyone, welcome back to Money Saving Mondays. Today I'm building a custom base plate for my one horse plunge router. Now I have some ideas that I wanted to do with this base plate and I want it to be very functional. So today we're gonna add a couple of features to it and down the road we'll add some other features like a circle cutting jig and a jig for cutting ellipses and a few other things. Now I started with some quarter inch plexi that I picked up from one of the big box stores. That two, uh, 18 inch by 24 inch piece was right around $20 I think. After prepping the surface with some green uh, painter's tape, I added some glue stick to it and then the template over the top of that and then just cut a rough shape out on the chop saw. Now I marked some holes out that I wanted to drill and then I took it over to the scroll saw and cut out the center of this. This is actually where the base plate of the router is going to sit inside of right now. I'm going to make this a two layer type of situation. So after I had the center cut out, I cut out another piece of plexi roughly the same size as the rough cutout, and then uh, use some CA glue and sandwich those together. And then added a bunch of weight. Now while that was drying, I cut out two more strips one and a half inch wide of plexi and then glued those together off camera. So after the glue had sort of dried, I came back to this project about an hour later, uh, hour and a half later, and it was not ready. I should have waited. Um, I think probably because the oxygen couldn't get to the, the CA gel, it didn't quite cure all the way. Nevertheless, I went forward with the projects and cut out the rough shape and then kind of sanded most of the, most of the big you know, heavy marks out on the uh, disc sander and then the one inch belt sander. Then I took it over to the drill press and I cut out some of the holes. Now one hole is going to be tapped at 3 8 and the other two holes are going to, be, are going to have a slot in it for a kind of an adjustable fence. So after I drilled the holes, back over to the scroll saw and I cut out the slot. I find the more aggressive the scroll saw blade, the better it does. Now I want to cut some more holes kind of in this little offshoot that you see here. And this is going to do a couple of things. But most importantly, I'm going to be able to mount other things to this base plate down the road with these holes. Now I'm drilling it out with a 5 16 bit and then I'll come back and tap those holes with a 3 8 tap. I did use my drill press to help things get started nice and straight and then when I got done on the drill press I did the rest by hand. So after I had all that stuff done, I came back with some files and just kind of cleaned up some of the rougher edges on the inside of the slot and places I really couldn't get to with a power sander. So this is the fence or of sorts that um, I'm going to add to the bottom of this. So one of the things that I, you, when you're cutting with these power tools, plexiglass uh, can get pretty hot and when it melts, it leaves kind of jagged edges. So I used my block sander to kind of sand off some of those rough edges and then took it over to the drill press and drilled the holes that I needed. Now in this one, I need a slot as well. And you'll see why towards the end of the build. Now the, the blade got hot and melted some of that plexiglass together. So when I pushed that piece out, I actually broke that top layer of plexiglass. Thankfully it didn't go through the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and live with this for right now. And then I use this deburring tool. Whenever you're working with plexi or, or plastics, these little deburring tools uh, are coming real handy for just taking those really sharp edges off of the glass. And with that done, I cleaned it up over on the disc sander. Now the next thing I need to do is find the center of that base plate. And to do that, I'm installing my 1 8 collet and a 1 16 inch bit into the collet. And then I'm just going to turn my router on and plunge down with it set in its little position to create a hole. And that's going to give me my center point. So from the center point, I'm going to be able to lay out everything else that I want to do. Now I'm marking out some positions um, just above the aluminum where there's gaps below, below the aluminum housing for the base plate mount. And I'm drilling some countersunk holes. I'm using an 82 degree, 82 degree countersink and uh, coming back and installing some wood screws. I want to use wood screws to screw the router base plate to the existing router plate, 
Uh, that way, if I ever happen to lose the, the screws, I can always replace them really easily. I've always got some wood screws laying around the shop. So with that done, I marked two positions, an inch and a half from the center on either side. And again, I'm drilling a 5 16 hole. I did that in both spots. And I'm gonna come back and tap those holes as well with a 3 8 tap. This will all make sense here shortly. Really the last thing to do was uh, to drill out the center of the uh, base plate. And I used a two inch Fossner bit and drilled that out. Now you gotta be careful. I got it set at a pretty high speed so it was melting the plexi. I should have turned the drill down but I was too lazy to change the belt. So I'm taking some short 3 8 uh, bolts and I'm just cutting the head off of them. And then I'm cutting a groove in the top of them and then I'm gonna come back and chuck them up in my drill and just clean up the uh, part that I cut. Now I can screw those into the base plate with the uh, 3 8 holes that are either on either side of the drill bit. Now what I can do with those is use that as a center finder. If I need to draw, you know, to route a groove down a piece of material, which is something I do a lot when I'm building jigs, I can just drop the bit in there, drop these in, and then that's going to act as a center finder so I don't have to worry about trying to center out the piece uh, when I'm routing it. And that's just one cool feature of this base plate. Now those holes in the back that I'm going to use to attach to other jigs in the future make handy little spots to put those plugs um, or whatever you want to call them that I use for cutting the, uh, the center, the use for the center finder. Now the, the slots that I cut earlier are going to be used for this fence. Now this fence is adjustable so I can use bits that don't have a bearing. So I can use it to make profiles on edges because I have a lot of router bits that don't have bearings. And that makes it really handy to you know, use some of the bits that I otherwise couldn't do. I can also use it as a fence and, you know, get up to about two inches into a material if I want to create a flute or something. Now, I have not made the hardware for that uh, fence yet. I need to come back and actually make the uh, hardware for that fence. So I will get that uh, done in one of the next videos when I build the elliptical jig and circle finding jig for this. But so far, it's really handy and I used it right away to cut some center grooves and some slides that I'm using on a bench vise that I'm building. So despite the issues I had with the glue, this turned out to be a really handy build. You know, being able to route down the center of something very easily is very handy. I, that'll come in really useful here in the shop. And um, you know, being able to use those bits for you know doing the edging without having to set it up in a router or a table is going to be really nice as well. And I like the fact that it's got a much larger base now. So if I am in a situation where I have to flip it upside down and use it as a makeshift router table, that'll come in really handy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, I'd like to invite you to do so. We put out three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we'll talk to you soon.